Now you're looking into real estate investing more seriously, but you're concerned about your credit? Let's talk about how it may affect your real estate ambitions. Credit. Credit. You love it, you hate it. You can't avoid it. it. Yeah, you can't avoid it. It's part of everything. It's like just about every deal, I would say, we pull credit on. Or yeah, pull sometimes credit. it's, a, yeah. I guess I was like, in my brain, I was like, oh, we do soft pulls and hard pulls. So we can get into that as well. But credit's a factor. You're mm -hmm. not going to really avoid that in regards to any of your transactions that you would do with us. So fix and flip, uh, DSCR, commercial deals, all of them will have uh, credit as a qualifying factor. Mm -hmm. So um, most of our financing um, doesn't report to um, personal credit. Mm -hmm. Most, keyword, some of our lenders are starting to, and I don't know if that'll continue to be a trend or not, but I would say 90% of the lenders don't. So mm -hmm. uh, these are nice because if you decide to buy a primary residence in the future, you won't get bogged down with the paperwork that comes with something reporting to personal credit. Um, these also close in LLCs, which is another added benefit in regards to liability purposes. But the credit score will tell us how your pricing is determined. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, the ugly. And I would say for investors, credit changes often. Yes. It doesn't matter. This is not a, you know, I think in the retail space, we look at credit as like determining how good the borrower is mm -hmm. and, and maybe some judginess. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Um, in this space, that's not really a true correlation um, because investors as a whole, I mean, they're pulling credit regularly, mm -hmm. which is not, I would say, a standard practice for just a, you know, a, a Joe Smo borrower. They're uh, doing a lot of transactions. They're potentially utilizing credit a lot more based on rehabs that are going on. Mm -hmm. So they're just different, uh, different beasts in the credit world. So mm -hmm. what are you seeing? Uh, what gets you the best pricing? So I if say, I want the best of the best, what where do I have to be? Yeah, I'd say 720 and up, you're going to get top tier pricing. Uh, anything on top of that. In the DSCR space, you might get a little icing on the cake. It might tweak the, 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 the interest rate by a couple of basis points, but it's not going to be dramatic. It's yeah. not going to be significant. In the hard money space, 720 up, you're top tier pricing all day. Yep. Um, and down payments. And and down payments. Yep. Yeah. So if you want, so we often talk about how you can do something with as little as 10% down with a hard money deal. You're definitely going to need a 720 credit score to do that. Yep. You dip under 720, you're going to see a slight reduction in LTV. So you might go from 90% LTV to 85 or 85 to 80. Yeah. Um, or you're going to need deal. some hella experience to get back up to that 90 space. But yeah. we'll kind of play around with all those options alternatively. And I guess back to what you were saying, anything over 720, definitely tell us about those things. Uh, I think too often people are just kind of used to that 720 or they don't really look at their credit that often. Um, I will say um, in the DSCR space, we have a couple, as you mentioned, a couple lenders at 740, 760, 780, mm -hmm. 800, where those pricings get a little skinnier. And I mean, every penny counts. And so yeah. we want to get that to you. So if you think you're in those higher tier credit scores, definitely let us know. But I also say that and yeah. credit moder monitoring services are crap. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just be blunt. They are okay. They're there for monitoring. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Yeah. They're, they're not there to be the the most accurate, exactly. the exact number. And why is that? It's because each lender has their own proprietary system for calculating your credit score. Correct. So, okay, you you know, you have the same data that's out there for your 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 credit. So when you know, how many lines of credit do you have? What are the balances? Are there on on time payments? How long have those credit lines existed? And 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 every lender is going to take that data and then calculate it differently to come up with that score. Yeah. So you got to keep that in mind. So five different lenders could pull your score and you might get five different credit scores. But definitely like if the credit monitoring system gives you typically the rosiest picture of what your credit might be. So take whatever Credit Karma says and reduce it by like 20 points, 30 points, 40 points. And that might be a little bit more accurate to what a mortgage. And we always want to err on the side of caution. We are, again, we're brokers. So we're going to be working with 40 to 50 different lenders to find you the best terms and conditions. But I'm not pulling your credit 40 to 50 different times. No. Uh, and we actually don't pull credit until you're in contract and ready to, you know, kind of proceed. So we want to err on the side of caution of if you think you're 720 and you're confident of that, you even think you're probably well above that, cool, let's quit you at 720 to kind of be safe on that. Um, if you're... If you're unsure, I'm always going to err on the side of caution. I may go down to 700. I may go down to 680. Or I may even just give you the the options of, hey, when, once with this thing actually hits, we're going to be somewhere in this range so that you're very much aware of yeah. where we're going to be sitting. Yeah. I think um, I do kind of want to talk a little bit about 
so sometimes we see flippers where they they get into a deal and they're like and you know they 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 buy the deal they're at a 720 everything's going great and then when we go in for the refi their credit has dropped yeah and it's usually due to the utilization it's because yeah. they're putting everything on credit cards they're saying well you know these the the, the draws on hard money are 150 bucks a piece so i'm going to wait till the very end and then do one single draw, so I save that one hundred and fifty dollars a pop. Well, guess what's happening in the meanwhile? If that if that flip takes three months, you've got three months of utilization where your credit cards are maxed out. Guess what yep. that's going to do to your credit score? It's going to tank it. Yep. Whereas if you if you have that debt that the rehab debt carried on the escrow holdback of the hard money loan, yeah. that doesn't report to your credit. Nope. To Oh, right. Yep. Exactly. So, so you're you're going to see a, a much improved utilization rate, uh, which will translate to maintaining that credit score. So that's well, really important to and, think about. And to speak to that, okay, let's say you use your credit cards, um, you leave it on there. Okay, great. You do the draw, you pay it down. Now that has to report. Yeah. So that could be a couple weeks to report. It could be thirty days to report. Yeah. Hell, I've seen some bureaus take forty five days to report that you've done really? these pay downs and then all of a sudden we're having to drag this out just mm -hmm. to get you a better interest rate so yep. it's just being very mindful credit utilization once you have established credit that's pretty much the only thing that's really affecting credit minus like clearly lates that happen yeah, lates and collections and stuff like that credit utilization is going to be the biggest thing and and staying under i would say the rule of thumb is typically 30 percent of your total line so yep. being as mindful of that and if you do go over 30 how mm. long like how long do you plan on doing this and being mindful of how that can affect transactions moving forward so speaking of that okay at what score does it start to like really affect terms and conditions Ugly. where it starts to get a little yeah, little hairy like, um 660 i think is probably the bottom yeah. of now that doesn't mean that we can't we can still do deals less than 660 but if you're below 660 then it's then we're we're really hitting the rolodex to well, find a lot of lenders say no at 660 yeah, yeah exactly so we, we go from 40 to 50 to 15 yeah or maybe? five uh, or or, or yeah something? i mean if you're less, much yeah, less if you're under like 620 it's like one or two. Now we do have, uh, you know, if you're super experienced and you're in Central Ohio, we do have a couple of private money lenders that have an interest in this area, and they don't pull credit. They will do background checks, so that might be out there. But they also want to make sure that you really know what you're doing, so they're going to want to see a, a pretty good track record. Yeah. Uh, to to justify get into that. To justify that. Yeah. 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 I think it's just being open and honest about credit. It will change your condition, uh, your terms and conditions considerably, and so like. We don't want to be surprised by that. You don't want to be surprised by that. So just like give it to us straight. Yeah. It's not the end of the world. Credit, you know, can change from one month to the next. And so maybe on this deal, you, you know, it's ugly. We can work with that ugliness. But next deal, you're like, hey, once I get these profits, I pay down my credit cards. I'm in a better place. Those terms and conditions will get better. But how important is this deal to take down? Yeah. And that's the, the thing that this client needs to really think about is if this deal is something you can't lose and yeah. you don't care what the terms are, you just want the lending, we got you. Like yeah. there's someone that'll that. write on almost nearly any transaction, so. Do you wanna talk about the difference between like decent credit and really rough credit as far as like closing costs and rate and yeah. things like that? Yeah, and LTV, I would say so on the yeah. DSCR space. So fix and flip, your, your credit score is a little bit lower. Like is the rate gonna change dramatically? No. Your LTV, so your down payment or funds needed for closing, that'll change. So on the fix and flip side, not going to see a lot of movement on the interest rate side. You will see movement on the down payment, potentially even a, an additional point in origination if credit is, again. And you're, you're talking between six, six, 660 and 720 in that space. Yeah, yeah. Because if, if you're like at like a 590. This changes everything. That like changes that's everything. That's a whole other ballgame. That's game. a whole other. Yeah. So, and, and just to be clear. So that 660 to 720, you're probably going to see rates in the 12, 13% range down to 10 and a half. Yep. Does that seem Very right? Very accurate. Yeah. Yep. And then, but that 590, you're going to see 15%. Yeah. I easy would say 15. 15% and then points, whatever I tell points. you. <laughs> many many <laughs> points. Because it then yeah. comes down to like the deal size yeah. and how we can work it. And I mean, know that in that regard, we are negotiating hard we yeah. are trying to sell you as a concept to this lender for them to write that deal yeah because 
they're not even actually in those scenarios sometimes going to pull credit, but they're still going to want us to really kind of sell this to them. Why yeah. am I doing this deal? Yeah. And I'm going to be compensated handsomely to get it done. So then it comes back to that same question is, if you're willing to pay within reason, obviously, yeah. anything to get this deal done, we got you. We'll, yeah. we'll find someone. It may take a little bit of time. You may need a little bit more time on the contract uh, for us to get this to the finish line, but we'll get you there. Yeah. In the DSCR space, alternatively, I would say, you know, Seven six twenty is a bottom. Uh, six twenty is the bottom. I would say true big LTV changes. So if you want seventy five percent cash out on a refi, seven hundred and above. Once you get under seven hundred, you're probably limited to seventy percent. I think we have one lender that'll go to seventy five still. Yeah. Um, once you're under six eighty, the rate gets ugly. But if you need to be at seventy five, we again probably have one lender that'll still go to seventy five. But you're just gonna start to see. LTV reductions. Mm -hmm. So your max loan to value, the loan amount compared to the value of the property, you know, this is going to help us pay off whatever hard money loan that you have outstanding. And so we need that loan amount to be as large as humanly possible to ensure that we can satisfy that debt. Mm -hmm. Because in most cases, investors are hoping for cash out. Mm -hmm. Well, if credit becomes a deterrent in our plan, you may be just satisfying the loan that, that will be the goal is to satisfy the loan, cover the closing cost, and just kind of package this deal up and we'll move on to the next one. Yeah. Um, so it's just being really mindful that these are things that will affect your terms and conditions. And then I don't think we brought up your interest rate will increase. Yeah. So I would say going interest rates as of what's today, end of June of 2024, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ask me tomorrow, it could change. But I don't know. We're seeing like refi rates right in that like mid to mid sevens to low eights good credit, good circumstances across the board. So, um, but once you get under 700, that's when it starts to do, 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 mm -hmm. do. I mean, I would say the highest rate we're seeing in the DSCR space is maybe like nine and a half. Ten, oh, the highest? It I did I mean, a deal. You... Actually, I did a deal mm -hmm. last month for a guy who had 640 credit, needed 75% LTV. We did it. So again, if you need it, we got you. Uh, it was 10 and a quarter. Yeah. The property still cash flowed. I mean, yeah. the property still handsomely cash flowed. And I loved the client. Mm -hmm. The client looked at me and said, what's my cash flow? And I came back with the response. He's like, it's fine because it's cash flowing. Yeah. My credit will change in the future. Yeah. I can refinance this in the future and increase my cash flow again and lower that interest rate. Right now, my biggest priority is getting out of my hard money and making sure I'm still cash flowing. And I have like, I was like, can you just like duplicate you 100 <laughs> times over? Tell all uh, the other borrowers. Yeah. Because that I think sometimes people get lost in the, oh my God, my interest rate's horrible. Or, oh my gosh, my terms aren't what I was expecting. And it's like, well, yeah. we're, we're working with what we're working with. And are we still satisfying the goal? The goal? I mean, sometimes the difference between a good real estate deal and a bad real estate deal is just one simple thing and it's time. Yeah. I mean, it's it's okay. So you, here's where you're at. You 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 didn't do the thing that I said and you did carry a bunch of debt on your credit cards during the flip. And so now your credit's tanked. So okay, we're going to get into a DSCR loan to 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 burr this thing and the rate's probably not going to be the best. Yeah. But you know, there is this thought out there that rates are going to go down again um, sometime in the next few years. Okay, cool. Well, just ride it out for a few years. Yeah, hang know? out for a little while. Yeah, it's if it's cash flowing, if it's covering your bills, you know, that property, hopefully it's appreciating, you know, and and, and it, it, it will get better. Like, I would say, generally speaking, a lot of these things get better. As long as you're not bleeding every single month uh, on a deal, then chances are you can make it work. And even if you are, I mean, maybe there's something coming down the pike in the area. Maybe there's some new development that's that's being worked on, and it might be worth bleeding a little bit. I don't know. It, it Every deal's different. Well, and then I would say as long as that's a one-off, yeah, bleeding is a one-off, meaning that you're negatively cash flowing. I guess to give yeah. some context of what Adam's trying to relay is if you're neg negatively cash flowing on this deal, okay, oh. but have we done this before? Yeah. Did we not learn the lessons from the previous deal or is this one? Deal? Is it every single deal? Because yeah. all that starts to add up. So, oh, I'm negatively cash flowing $100 a month on this one and $200 a month on that one. And Wait, wait, wait. We have to remember all of our loans don't have, most of our, most of our loans don't have any income validation. So I don't know what cash position you actually bring in on a monthly basis. And if mm -hmm. you can cover this deficit mm -hmm. and neither does the lender and you can only add up those hundred to $200 a month negative cash flows so many times for 
anyone mm-hmm. to have a hard time covering that. Yeah. So it's just being really mindful of what that looks like and protecting yourself and knowing how credit can affect things. But we're here to help. I mean, that's the great thing about working with a broker mm-hmm. is we're not limited to one lending guideline. We have 40 to 50 different lenders out there that all are different in regards to credit and loan to value and interest rates and how they determine the DSCR and potentially some that allow for negative cash flow circumstances. All of these play into us saying, okay, we're in something, you know, not ideal. Mm -hmm. We probably have a solution for you. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. Let's do it. Absolutely.